Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React Time, Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike, Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are the Office Blokes. Yep. It yep. is true. Not only do we have a reaction channel, we've almost, almost got a gaming channel with videos on it. Proper Absolutely content. Madness, isn't it? By the time this comes out, it might be already out, right? Hope oh, so, yeah. yeah. A bit Possibly. of luck. Yeah, yeah. It's an excuse for us to do a bit of friendly competition, a little bit of banter, a little bit of Mickey taking. Yeah, and, you get uh, to know a little bit more about us as well, if you're interested in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's a cheat and who's fair and <laughs> <a cheat. laughs> Who's a cheat? <laughs> Not saying anything. People have to decide for themselves, aren't they? Guilty. Anyway, right. <laughs> Top 10 countries with the most Americans living abroad. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I've met loads of Americans uh, outside of the USA uh, who are living overseas. Yeah, a lot of military, a lot of like uh, <coughs> IT people. You know what military ah, is going to be a huge. I was going to say is that, that I'm assuming that'd be part of it because yeah. you've got military bases which we've done on a reaction before. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. everywhere. It's absolutely unbelievable. Strangest one. I went in this office in Korea and uh, walked in. I was with a Korean colleague um, and we walked into the office and I, as I walked in, everyone was Korean about from this one guy who was just a white. Round, round eyed guy, you called him. Jamaica. Um, and I was like, I just looked at him and I went, I looked around the office like that. And he looked at me and I went, What are you doing here? <laughs> like, I think it was Hyundai or LG or someone like right, that. Yeah, right. And I went, What are you doing here? And he went, I Work here. <laughs> I just went, You just 100% don't fit in. <laughs> was he ginger with freckles? So, yeah, he just, he's kind of like very, he's like a big guy sort of thing. He just didn't yeah, fit yeah, into yeah. that environment yeah, sort yeah, of thing. It was a place. So I, they all had to meet and I just sat and chatted to him for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I want to speak Korean. There's no, no point in me being there. Yeah. I think mil military bases have got to be a huge thing. Big so part, potentially yeah. Japan could mm. be on here because there's big bases there. Germany yeah, has Germany. big military bases. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Germany. Yeah. It's probably quite a few in the UK, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. I think you could also, uh, I mean, when you look at the top 10 countries with the most Americans living abroad, when you look at Afghanistan, Iraq of old, you know, all the troops that were living there. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure that. I'm that not counts. sure that would be counted, mm. really. I, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah. Let's do it. The top 10 countries with the most Americans living abroad. Let's do this. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. I hope you're all doing well. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to take a look at where Americans are going when they've decided the United States isn't working out for them anymore. About 10 million Americans live in other countries, not counting the military or government yeah. personnel and their families, nothing like that. And that's according to the US. The United Nations says there's only about 5 million US residents living in other countries. The numbers are all over the map depending on how you look at it. Some only count US born citizens that now have or are applying to get citizenship in another country, while some get counted because they bought property or they live in another country most of the year. Basically, we won't have any exact numbers on this one. I'm just gonna give you a range according to the different studies, okay? If you can just buy property and count on this list, it's gotta be Luxembourg. Like everyone lives in Luxembourg <coughs> for tax reasons. Yeah, if, you at, um, <laughs> yes, so, yeah. if you look at um, where we live, uh, where, where I live, uh, there's a lot of American students out there. A lot. Is it? Is it? I hear every pub I go in here, American accents all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right, okay. A lot of them. Yeah. Wow. But then you look at other things. I've got two kids who are American. Yeah, that's true. Actually. Know, they live overseas. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, my uh, son's girlfriend and sister are Americans. There you go. They're from Florida. Yeah. So uh, straight away, us two. Mm, got four yeah, American yeah. relations yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so 50% yeah. of our household. Yeah. Probably not far off, is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Since 2016, the rate of outward migration has picked up steam. That was until the pandemic hit and, you know, threw everything out of whack. Trends are broken and people stayed put. The numbers on this list are what was reported by the U.S. Census and a couple other organizations up to 2019. So why do people leave the United States to live in another country? Most of the time, it's money. About 60% of the people give that as a reason. They move to other countries for lower cost of living and more affordable housing. Other reasons listed were politics, family, romantic relationships, and one man listed Nigeria because a Nigerian prince owed him some money and he wanted <laughs> to stay close to his investment. Okay. But whatever the reason is a lot of Americans are moving to other countries to live their life. All right, let's see where all the expats are staying. Number 10, Italy. Good food, beautiful ancient cities, decent weather for the most part in most of the country, and it's a lot cheaper. When you look at the cost of living according to the world data, they use the United States as the base and they give it 100. Italy gets a 58. This means normal expenses are about 42% cheaper than here in the United States if you're living in Italy. 
The cost of living and the fact that you're living in Italy is why people are moving there. Italy is a very desirable place to live, especially by a lot of, you know, Canadians and Americans. They want to live there. About 60,000 to 82,000 Americans are now living in Italy wow. long term. Mm. Number two. Well, the Italians are sick of hearing, oh, this guy. <laughs> he invented it. <laughs> yeah. Was well, this one going to be Brazil? I don't know, yeah. but it, Italy makes sense. Brazil, Argentina, yeah. I, I'm thinking a lot of the countries are going to be, like people can trace their lineage back to that country. And yeah. they're kind of going back um, to the motherland. You think maybe even Mexico there might be quite a few. Because, I, I mean, that's close as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I also so. think a lot of people, when they go to live overseas, I think what some of the reasons he was using, I think a lot of people go and visit the lineage, their ancestry and all that, where they, where they might be from, but go back to the USA. I'm not sure people actually want to go and live there. I might right, be wrong. Yeah. I might be wrong, but that's that's the that's the impression I kind of get. Yeah. People yeah. might say, you know, my family are from Italy, but I want to go back to, you know, I want to go and live in Brazil or I want to live in Germany yeah, yeah. or whatever it may be. Mm. You know, mm, could be. Peru. Yeah, I didn't see this one coming. This South American country boasts world-famous rainforests, beautiful mountain ranges, and very inviting people. The people here are really great. But the real reason people are moving here is the cost of living. Compared to the U.S. is 100, like I said before, Peru is at 19.2. I look at it this way. Wow. To get 100 bucks worth of stuff in Peru, it costs you about $19.20, and that's compared to U.S. money. There's one warning about Peru. The cities are ripe with corruption, and counterfeit currency is commonly given to tourists. I'm sure if you live there a while, you're going to know the difference, and, you know, they probably won't try and scam you, but that's a big thing they do to, you know... Americans, Canadians, whoever moves down there. Between 56,000 and 84,000 Americans wow. mm. live in Peru long term. Number eight, France. It's France, so I'm sure not many people are surprised Americans are moving there. It's a beautiful place to live. Housing is cheaper for the most part. If you decide to live in, you know, Paris or, you know, the French Riviera, it's going to be a little more expensive. But most of the place, it's a lot cheaper. France has world-class wine, legendary food, and more than enough things to see and do. Their cost of living index number is 65.9. One warning though, the French have a reputation to Americans as being rude. In my experience, they're only rude when you're rude or being stupid. It's almost like they have zero tolerance for stupidity. It may be a little bit shorter fuse with Americans. <clears throat> Between 59,000 and 97,000 Americans live in France long term. Did you see what the Saint Etienne <clears throat> fans did when they got relegated? They weren't happy. Have you seen the footage of it? No. I've not seen the footage, but I've heard about it. I saw it. the footage of it this morning. They, they just storm the pitch and everyone just starts throwing flares at the dugout. I think they had to go and throw players and everything, yeah. weren't they? The players yeah. just had to run off the pitch as quick as they could. And it's honestly, it must be like 50, 60 flares that are lit being thrown at the dugout mm -hmm. and everyone's yeah. kicking off. It's a playoff match to stay in uh, League One, wasn't it? I think sure. St. So. Etienne as well. Was, uh, wasn't uh, they on the end, receiving end of a flare being thrown <laughs> back into the crowd this season? Or something being sure. thrown back into that the crowd. Bell, that possibly. Mm. That's chaos. Yeah. So it looks like it looks like a war's kicking off. Yeah. You know, when you watch the footage of it. Yeah. yeah. Absolute madness. Good. So yeah, lovely, lovely people, the French. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, <clears throat> South Korea. South Korea has been showing up on this list periodically since the 1980s. Sure, they have a crazy nuclear-powered country next door, but that is a minor issue to most Great moving place. there. Yeah, for yeah. some reason that doesn't seem to bother a lot of people. South Korea remains one of the best places to live abroad for Americans. A lot of Americans land here because of the tech industry and they decide to stay after maybe they don't have that job anymore or their job wants to bring back to the United States. They get another one in Korea. South Koreans are known for being extremely welcoming towards newcomers. It's their thing. They're very, you know, it's almost like here in the South, we have Southern hospitality. Koreans are very hospitable. Additionally, expats in South Korea will have plenty of things to do outside of the cities. They always seem to have some sort of festival or something like that going on in different places in South Korea. The cost of living index is 54, so almost half price what you have to pay here in the United States on average. It can get cold in some parts during the winter, but they have all four seasons, which a lot of people enjoy. The negative thing here is it's still technically at war with that crazy neighbor. So it's been over 50, really almost 70 years that they've been at war with North Korea, and not much has really happened in that time, Looks but beautiful. it's something you want to keep yeah. in mind. Between 67,000 and 111,000 Americans live in South Korea long term. When I went there, it was St. Paddy's Day. Um, well, I've been there a few times, but one of the one of the times I went was St. Paddy's Day. And uh, again, 
place was rammed full of Americans, jam yeah, really. all the bars yeah. mm. and all that. And it's it's a great vibe there. And it's one of the they got one of these like laws, not not laws, like a tradition, where the eldest person is the last person to leave, and you can't oh. drink until that eldest person has his first drink and all that sort of thing. Wow. So I was with this Korean guy who's a bit older than me. There's a bunch yeah. of us out there, about fifteen of us sat around this table and everyone's waiting for him and he has his first fuck was the last one to leave as well like four in the morning <laughs> <laughs> drinking drinking gin roll like yeah. like you wouldn't oh, believe we're out of fashion wow. like, smashed out of our tree and then he's got you're back at work at eight in the morning really? sort of thing. yeah and he's the first one back at work uh, mm. whereabouts you then in the capital oh. well i've been a few places there yeah. i've been uh busan uh seoul a few different places oh it there. strikes me that it's sort of like really safe country yeah it's you know crime wise i never had any issues there yeah but um, it's fastest, a cool little place. <clears throat> fastest internet in the world in mm, South really? Korea as well. Is it? Yeah, for your average consumer. Yeah. yeah. But when I used to go there with work, I used to love it. I used to I used yeah. to get buzz going there. First time I ever went though, I went like in, in the winter time and I thought it'd just be like the rest of Southeast Asia where it'd be a little bit warm freezing. and hot and snowing. Was it? I didn't even have a coat, I had to go out and buy a coat. <laughs> <laughs> Dick, you didn't say well. Just in your t shirt probably <laughs> weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Number six, Israel. One of the main motivators for a new life in Israel is obviously religion. That isn't the only reason though. Israel has a growing tech sector and a really low cost of living. They come in with a 55.4 cost of living index. One thing to keep in mind, Israel isn't a war-torn desert landscape like Syria or something. If you've watched too much cable news here in the United States over the years, you might think that. Yes, they have had <clears throat> conflicts and unrest dating back hundreds and hundreds of years, but for the most part, it is very rare to have some craziness going on on the streets of Israel. Israel is an amazing country with really nice weather most of the time. That's what draws a lot of people in, cost of living, good weather, and religion. Between 76,000 and 122,000 oh. Americans live in Israel. Pomegranates. I thought that'd be high up. Pardon? Pomegranates as well. That's what Israel's known for, isn't it? Really? I, just thought, just sort of pull out, I bought I some of them was, two days ago. I thought it was Persia. A lot of them are uh, Israel. Grown in Israel. Mm. Oh. Mm. Apparently. I, 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 I knew some people that went to Tel Aviv just on a, on a random mm. holiday. I didn't know what to expect until I saw pictures, and it was like beautiful sandy beaches. And it's a big like, holiday spot, Tel Aviv. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked Haifa. at it, and I was like, I'd love to go yeah. there. That's the thing, because a lot of the time on the news, like you're saying, you just get sort of like when it's like riots and stuff that's all you ever see isn't it a lot of the time rather yeah, than all the yeah, other a, you know places around yeah, it's there. a big big holiday resort mm. you know it's uh, if you go in the, if you go in the uh, if you go in a travel agent over here and look at the, some of the magazines that they, they you know they distribute yeah and you go i think it's like is it haifa tel aviv and there's another place i'm missing i can't think of the name of it now but there's like three main sort of like oh. areas there that are like yeah. proper big touristy areas nice yeah. I'm thinking England is going to be on here because of the banking sector in London. Possibly, possibly, but I'm you not sure about so, that many yeah. people. Um, I don't know, I don't know. I but I mean, you said between the two of you, there's four Americans yeah, already, yeah. you know, just yeah. one step away. I think mm. Canada will be on here. Yeah, it's got to be, hasn't mm. it? Because it's that close. Mm. Number five, Australia. Mm. That's right, the land yeah. down under has a whole bunch of Americans. They may not want them, but if you live there, you'd never know. They're always so nice. I'm sure some of them can be dick. It's weird how almost every single Australian I've ever met has been extremely pleasant and fun. They're just nice people. Weather and beaches play a big part in the American migration to Australia. Australia isn't as cheap as others on this list with a 78.1 cost of living index, but the beaches, weather, and lifestyle are really why people move here. About 90% of the people in Australia live within 20 miles from the ocean. If you want to live inland, it's not as populated, so you'll find cheaper land, but maybe not cheaper everything else because of shipping and logistics and getting things to you. Sort of like here in the States, we have Alaska. Alaska's got cheap land in a lot of cases, but everything else is expensive because they got to ship it there. Between 114 and 145,000 wow. Americans live permanently in Australia. Number I've been just to know how many Brits live over there as well. Oh, got a there's lot, a lot of transient yeah, ones because you lot, go for a year it? or two, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. But, yeah, what's the population of Australia? Is it about 7 million? 11 seven, million, maybe? I'd be guessing like 20, 30 million. You would. It's I quite think, low, isn't it? I thought 11 yeah. million. For some reason, I've got 7 or 11 million in my mind. Yeah, yeah. 7, 11. I think it's mainly, <laughs> it's mainly the coast, isn't it? <laughs> it's all coastal, yeah. yeah. Pretty much, isn't it, yeah. I'm thinking, let's say there was 7 million and there's 140,000 Americans there. That's quite a big proportion of the population. I might be way off on the population, but for some reason, yeah. You try and store that information and not really asked how many people live in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> too far. Yeah, long way. Or Germany. 
Yeah. Believe it or not, a lot of Americans are moving to Germany. You never really hear about that, but yes, a lot of Americans have moved to Germany in recent years, but actually it's been going on quite a while. There's a lot of reasons for this. Germany is a little bit easier on the cost of living compared to the United States. Again, not as much as some of the other ones on this list with a 81.3 cost of living index, but that's really not what's bringing people in. They have a great quality of life and their work-life balance is great, along with an amazing culture. Working hours are shorter in Germany than any other developed nation. Despite that, Germany has one of the best economies in Europe. Germany's excellent universal healthcare system explains why people there live two years longer on average than people in the US. They've got a great healthcare system. And if you're sick, you just go. There's not, you know, big premiums or anything else to pay. Sure, taxes and all that, but it's a lot better. A lot of people like it there. The people in Germany are happy with their healthcare system. Between 127,000 and 142,000 Americans live in Germany. I'd like to know what index is going off here with price, you know, the price <clears throat> index. Because I think Australia, one of my mates moved back from Australia because it's so expensive. Yeah, yeah. And he's quite a wealthy guy. Oh, really? And he said it's just far too expensive for yeah. me. I've known okay. like, loads of people live out there mm. for a couple of years, and I think wages are high. Mm. Like, I knew people who were stacking boxes on the end of a production line, and they were getting, like, I think it was like $30, $40 an hour or mm. something. Yeah. But I think the exchange rate's two for one for yeah, the pound. I don't know about that, but I don't think property is particularly cheap, is it? I've no, seen a few no, programs over no. here about people mm. thinking of moving to Australia or staying over here, and all the properties always seem to be yeah. pretty expensive, yeah. actually. But I guess, you know, oh. if you go to the USA and you live in New York City, I know the, 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 the price yeah. is quite expensive, but if you live in somewhere like, you know, I don't know, I'm going to say something here and everyone's going to go, it's fucking that expensive there anyway. But if you go in the Midwest somewhere where it's a little bit cheaper, a bit more inland or whatever, yeah. and it's, you know, not everywhere is like New York City or LA or, you know, big, yeah. big cities. So it's not expensive. Thing. The big cities, New York, yeah. Paris, London, you know. I guess that's probably the, probably the index to take in. You know, give London an example. You just want to yeah. try and live in Chelsea or Knightsbridge or yeah. go and try and live in Burnley. <laughs> well, yeah. You can buy the whole difference. of Burnley for one apartment in yeah. Knightsbridge. You know. Do you know where the uh, UK capital of culture is in 2025? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Bradford, isn't it? <laughs> Bradford. Bradford. <Yeah. laughs> Enough said. Number three, the United Kingdom. There's a few reasons Possibly. Americans choose to move to the United Kingdom. One of the main reasons is there's no language barrier. A lot of people that have decided they want out of the US will choose England, Northern Ireland, or Scotland because they don't want to have to learn another language, point, even huh? though yeah, a good percentage of all European countries and the people in them speak English. Side note to that, if you visit or move to Manchester, they are speaking English. It may not hey, sound like it, oh. but it is in fact English. <laughs> Our history and culture are well, lead like, drivers for Americans to move like across the pond and stay, I mean, after the language. Get it, Paul, Steve. That's quality. I that. mean, go cool. back on that. <laughs> <laughs> Proper dizzy Manchester there, isn't he, with the accent? Has yeah. been watching our thingy, our yeah. reaction channel. Wanker. It's the proper accent. <laughs> this, is the, this is the centre of England. Centre of Britain. Right in the centre of, of Britain. It Absolutely. It's true. it's true. People talk like Peppa Pig down in London. They talk mm. properly up here. Of course they do. I'm surprised they picked Manchester, though, as a... Uh... He's, probably, he's obviously been to Manchester, hasn't he? There's other accents that are a lot harder to understand than Newcastle. Manchester. You try going to Newcastle or Redcar, places yeah, like that. Yeah, Scouse accent. Or, yeah, yeah. Which, even though a good percentage of all European countries and the people in them <laughs> speak English. Side note to that, if you visit or move to Manchester, they are speaking English. It may not sound like it at first, but it is in fact English. Healthcare <laughs> well, history and culture are the main drivers for Americans to move across the pond and stay, I mean, after the language barrier thing. The cost of living index is 63.1% in the United Kingdom, which is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. The United Kingdom has between 215,000 and 252,000 wow. wow. Americans living within their border. Number two, Canada. This yeah. one's a no-brainer. Everybody knows someone that's talked about moving to Canada. Normally around election years when people really start talking about this. I know they have a jump in Google searches for things related to moving to Canada every single election. It's like election doesn't go someone's way, they want to skip town. Healthcare and being close to the US are the main reasons Americans want to move to the Great White North. Healthcare is one of the biggest drivers for this migration, I mean by far. Even Americans not looking for citizenship cross the border to get their prescriptions every single day in Canada. Canadians do pay a good amount of taxes for that healthcare, but at least they're not going broke trying to pay for some kind of surgery they had i don't know don't want to get into that but one thing i did think was strange i thought their cost of living especially with all those taxes would be a lot higher but it's not it's 70.5 compared to the u.s so you know like i said you can get a hundred dollars worth of stuff for seventy dollars and fifty cents in canada that's not bad 
270,000 to 312,000 Americans live in Canada. On a I thought it'd be higher than that. Basis. Artists, yeah. Yeah. It's a bit of a mad one, isn't it? Because the, uh, I don't think that cost of living index that is going off really translates, mm. if you know what I mean. I don't think you're buying products 70% cheaper in Canada. You know, like an iPhone in the US yeah. versus Canada, it's not going to be 70% mm. cheaper in Canada, I mean, for example. I think, I think one of the big drivers of cost is like things like fuel, isn't it? And yeah, I think fuel, it's bread, it's it's everyday normally, essentials. It's normally the cheaper index. in the US, isn't it? Is it usually quite cheap for fuel? Mm. Are they tax less on it? It was, but I think it's it's everyday essentials, wasn't it? That yeah. They've used the price index for Right. So it's, I don't know, I just, it's, it seems a little bit strange. Some of them are so low. Yeah. That you think, you know, when, when you look at the uh, the consumer price index. Mm. But you can see why. This has done the study on it. Yeah. Across the border, you've got the, mostly the same language being spoke. You've got free healthcare. There's mm. lots of work opportunities in Canada and stuff, isn't there? Yeah. There's always a drive for like truck drivers to go out to Canada. Mm. And, you know, it seems like, a land of opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. I think I think the USA would be. I think the USA would offer more opportunity than what the, what Canada would. Um, I'm not sure that I'm not sure the work uh, employment uh, structure for Canada is anywhere near the size of what it is for the USA right. yeah. or other countries around the world. But, mm. but I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely a viable option. I I love Canada. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going in a couple of weeks. Really? I think so. Just for the weekend. Yeah, oh, nice. Go to Toronto. We're waiting for all the kids, but we're, we're a bit worried about all this fucking flying. Worried about queued, I, just, the I know if I got to the airport and all the queues were there, I'd be like, "Fuck it, I'm going home." <laughs> yeah, well, what what <laughs> if all the queues back. were there and then you got to check in and they said the flight's been cancelled? The flight Which, I'd go on wouldn't be cancelled though. I wouldn't, need to get, on, I wouldn't be flying on Tui or fucking any of them shit. Yeah, school lines. holidays out the way. I'd right. be a big queue a in my line. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give the video a big thumbs up. Tell us what you thought in the Mexico. comment section and be a member of I our community. All right, on to number one. And number one, Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, yeah, this may shock some of you and others not so much. A lot goes into why Americans move to Mexico. Cost of living, weather, proximity to the U.S., food, and culture are the main drivers. One other is family. A lot of Americans of Mexican parents, Mexican mm. descent, mm. choose to live in Mexico with family. Maybe the parents got deported. Maybe they just decided to go back to Mexico as they retired. Whatever the reason, a lot of people born here are choosing to live with their family in Mexico these days. That wasn't always the case. They used to put a lot of effort into coming to the United States and never leaving. It's not as big of a deal as it used to be. Mexico has some serious crime. The U.S. does too, but we often turn a blind eye and accept our crime while looking at Mexico like it's some kind of war zone. They do have some really bad areas that are run by cartels and things like that. I have a friend that I went to high school with who's lived in a small town in Mexico with his girlfriend for like 20 years. He says it's safer than the U.S., where he lives at least. Statistically, they are a little higher per capita in the crime area than the U.S., but I'm still sure it's not as bad as most of you think. The cost of living index in Mexico is 26, so like wow. we've said, wow. you get 100 bucks worth of stuff for $26 in Mexico. That's the easiest way to look at it. Between 762,000 and 900,000 Americans wow. live in Mexico on a permanent basis. Big country, though, isn't it? Yeah. All right, that's our video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you yeah. got some information out of it. It's yeah, I like that indeed. video. It's good, yeah, good. Yeah, some good info yeah, there. Yeah, good narration. And yeah, yeah. well put together. It's that world according to Briggs, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We, like yep. we like that channel. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's like I say, it's an mm. interesting one, really. Mm. I mean, the language is a huge thing. You would go, a lot of people are going to go course, somewhere where you, that, you can get by. Which is probably why you've got quite a few in Australia again as well. Then yeah. Obviously, they're getting to Europe. And yeah. even, even like Germany, you know, a lot, of, a lot of Germans probably do speak English as yeah. well, don't they? So yeah. everyone speaks English. easy to get by. Unless I turn up and then no one wants to know. <laughs> oh, she's going to let you go Frank <laughs> well, German yeah. German's based on Latin as well, isn't it? So it's it's similar to English in a lot of ways. Yeah. Mm. If there's a language we could pick up easiest, it's probably German. I've always been told that. I, I don't know, but I've always been told that German would be easiest language for yeah. people from England to learn. Well, I whether that's true or not, I don't know. Oh, really? really? Yeah, Spanish, and then if you can speak Spanish, then you you know you pick up certain languages. Yeah. But oh, right, I've okay. lived in countries where English isn't the first uh, language, yeah. sort of thing. But most people try and speak it. And yeah. you know, I lived in the Netherlands, and <clears> it's, uh, in the Netherlands, it's it's widely spoken. But where I lived, it wasn't very widely spoken. Right, so okay. it was, uh, I don't know, you try and get by with, you know, hand signals and <laughs> <laughs> putting an O on everything at yeah. the end. <laughs> nice. <laughs> can I have a carrier bag? 
<laughs> smoking a piece smoking pack. Smoking it. Yeah. Yeah. Steve McLaren in it. Yeah. 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 Nice. So, nice. Oh, man. It's good that you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.